Hey YouTube, it's Mal with Limbus Reptiles. We're going to continue bringing you along on a feeding of a large amount of our collection of ball pythons. We probably won't do this for all the racks, but we'll show you today how we feed this rack here. This rack is our FB20 rack, uh, which is just the Freedom Breeder tubs, not the Freedom Breeder rack, but it's, it's all TGR rack system. And it's going to be three wide, and we're going to go all the way down almost to four. So i got to take it low, 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 low as the quote goes. This is made up mostly of some of our smaller male breeders, some of our holdbacks, things like that. Things are going up, things we're going to deal with in the future. Uh, so you're going to see a lot of kick-ass cool animals in here. It's one of my favorite racks to feed because I get to see some really badass stuff. A couple things to pay attention to. One, this is a great chance to A, see our snake. One and A is the same thing. What the hell am I doing? One, great chance to see our snakes, see what we actually have. We don't show them off all that often. So you'll get to see a whole bunch of our collection as we go. For some small timers like us, I, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, number two, you're going to see how we feed. You're going to hear those interactions. We have a set way we do this. We do, uh, we do feed live, so I'll give you that warning too. So you'll see how we manage that feed how we're watching things, how we're going to go back through and check things, how that's all going to work. We'll kind of explain that as we go. Uh, number three is the warning, of course, we are going to be feeding live rodents, just rodents, to live snakes. If you don't want to see that, not the place for you. The point of the focus is not to watch rodents die. You probably will not see a lot of that because we're going to kind of drop them in, talk about the snake and shut it, and usually the bite will happen after that. Not always, you're going to see some, but the point of it is not just to sit and watch something get swallowed. It's not what we're doing. It's more of the uh, point of sharing our animals. Uh, those of you on Patreon, what are we going to do for the Patreon video? Because I can't feed them twice. You're right. So for you Patreon members, when we're done here, we're going to go in the display room. We're going to feed something really cool. I haven't picked it out yet, but it'll be something that either shakes its butt, makes a noise, or has fangs super long to go through something, or maybe something that bites like this. I don't know. As we go through feeding these racks, I'm going to feed some of the uh, specialty stuff we have for you and let you kind of be a part and see that. So without further ado, and if you're not a member, click on the link, sign up. It's worth throwing five bucks at. Uh, you get access to all of our animals first, our awesome Discord with a great group. It's more to them than us. It's more about community. It's about me because I'm not that interesting. You'll get access to extra videos and content every week, almost on average six days a week. And then you'll also, uh, on top of that, get on board with the monthly specials. And all of that comes at the whopping $5 level, but we would love to have you subscribe at $10, $15, or even $100 level, where you can come, if you're on the $100 level, you can come here, you can tell Caleb to get the hell out the reptile house and live in his home for a weekend. How cool is that? And he'll have to go stay in my guest bedroom homeless. So join up, make Caleb homeless for just a weekend. Caleb, have you ever been homeless before? Yeah, I've lived in my car for a whole week. He's fine with it, y'all. So sign up, make Caleb homeless. We'll still feed them, don't worry. All right, let's get ready to go ahead and do this. And we're gonna start with 180601. What that means is the snake was born in 2018. Clutch number six, baby number one, super pastel exanthic male. Caleb is down there. He tells me this thing is eating ASFs right now. So I'll grab an ASF, I'll drop an ASF in. Uh, we'll see what happens. So what we're kind of doing too, just so you know, is as we do all this, I'll go ahead, he didn't bite it right away. You thinking about it? Oh, you are thinking about it. Do you need a little privacy? Oh, no, there you go, that one got it. Uh, Caleb is writing down what we're putting in there. At the end of the day, we're gonna go back through. This is a fire 100% head exanthic. Uh, boop, that. He's eating rats. Now this is one that came to us as part of a collection. I just kinda, I'll be honest, I still kinda just have it here. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with that one. This one's one that doesn't really have much of a plan. So we'll go ahead and close you up. So we're not going to leave these in here. I talked on the other rack we did that we'll leave them in there for a while. We even had one that died a couple days ago, probably in there, that didn't get eaten. We won't do that here. Here, these are big enough rodents to do damage to the snake. So nothing will be left in here overnight. We'll put them in. We're going to go back through here shortly, and we'll pull everything out that doesn't get eaten. So this is our Tofino male. Whoa. What's he been eating? Little rats, too? Little rats. He's a really cool snake. I really dig this snake. So to me, Tofino, for those of you that don't have Tofino, what it is, it's an elite combo between Toffee and Albino. To me, it is a banana that doesn't turn to shit. Now, I'm not insulting anybody. Oh, you just got it. I'm not insulting anybody with banana. Obviously, we have a lot of banana. You're going to see some banana in here. Banana's awesome, but banana kind of fades. Banana gets spots. Tofino stays banging from day one till the day it dies. So if you want something that stays clean and keeps that color, has that kind of same style of look, go with a Tofino over a banana. Uh, it is hard to work with. But this, we're not sure what the hell's in here. We think it is a uh, pastel yellow belly fire exanthic, possibly. It looks like it is in shed right now. And it's getting an ASF. 
It's trying to eat it. Missed because it's in shed. Or it just pissed off. Well, now you found it. We do want to see this one eat because people will tell you you can't feed a snake in shed. We're going to test that theory. See if it takes it here for us really quick. And if it doesn't, we're going to shut the bin up and we'll just shut it up and see what happens. Well, you're going to get it right back there. Do, 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 do. So you see the snake's still moving, but its head's not moving. It's putting some curvature into its body, giving itself the ability to strike right now. So that's why you're seeing that kind of movement. If you look, you can see that curvature coming. It may choose to strike. First strike may have just been a reactionary strike. It may not choose to eat being in shed. Uh, or it might and grab it right out of the damn air like that. So that snake's growing really well. We're really excited about that one. Uh, that was one from last year. Over here we have a Superfly head exanthic male. Again, this one did come from a collection as well. And we'll drop this in here. So it is one I can use to save my female <laughs> super pastel exanthics because we would make some firefly exanthics. Uh, we'd make some super fly exanthics actually. So two super pastels together, all would be super pastel. Uh, half would be exanthic. You'd have a one in four shot at a super fly exanthic if I use that there. So that's probably what happened here. This is our pastel lesser desert ghost head cryptic male. Of course, this is the one we discovered to be head cryptic. He is never the world's best eater, so he's getting ASFs. He goes on and off during breed season. We do have to rotate him on and off of breeding. Uh, he's been eating great right now, and it's probably going to continue, it looks like. Go get it. Don't look at me. I'm not going to stick it in your mouth. Uh, this is a really cool snake. We're really happy with that snake. Uh, but you do have to watch him. That's one you can overbreed if you're not careful. I hear you get it. You did get it. <laughs> Uh, this is banana mahogany. Now this is also a paradox or a chimera. We're not really sure. The split head does kind of point towards a little bit of chimeraism, but it's not a guarantee. It could just simply be paradox. You have the head, a band, a band, and there's a little spot on the tail. It's also been getting ASFs apparently, so we'll give it one. This is the one uh, we personally hatched out, and we love this snake. Um, our plan here is to do Suma bananas. So again, I was talking about Tofino's banana that doesn't suck. Uh, and all I mean by that is it holds its color. Having the mahogany to darken things up, I'm hoping to hold that color really, really well here. Anyway, we are going to get some spotting, but we'll keep that banana color. Straight banana. This is Odin. He's our original banana male. And this is a great example. This is a cool looking snake, but these adult bananas look nothing like they do as babies. They look way better as babies. There's a mouse for you, buddy. Uh, a lot of spots on it, you know, but just this is what a banana turns into. Not bad. But it ain't as cool as they are as babies. So Tofino, however, kind of fixes that for you. You're going to grab that because you already won't close this tub. You're going to grab it. Awesome. 190907. This is a super pastel exantic. Hey, female. She'll take a rat right now, actually, if you got a good sized rat um, in there. Well, this is me and Caleb. Big. Nope, not too big. That's yeah, it might be too big. I lied. All right, she'll handle that. And the reason I wanted to go up in size for her is because when they're coming out the tub like that to eat my face, it's a good sign they're going to eat. And the bigger food I can fit into these, the quicker I can get them to grow, get them ready to breed in a responsible manner. We're not trying to power feed them. I want good sized meals in them. That thing, is that just got ASFs and mice in it and stuff right now? What's that? Do we have any rats in that one? No. Do we want to grab some small rats I for mean, size? pops, but... Okay, we'll be fine then. Um, some of these can start going to lower. This is a killer spin scaleless head female so super pastel uh spider pinstripe scaleless head so pastel pastel pinstripe spider scaleless head pig -ow. and it looks really fucking cool and it's eating really good here you go little one well, obviously we're wanting to raise that up you find it it's touching you uh, no no it's in there dork and as you can see, the spider's not really affecting this thing at all. Uh, it's going to eat just fine when it realizes where the food is. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, I'm going to close you so you can find your dinner. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Oh, right before I close it up. Didn't want to wait any longer. And that's something to check too. We want to make sure that rat can't bite the snake, which it's not able to do now, so we're good to go. Also, don't get your thumb bit doing that. It hurts like a bitch. Scaleless head lemon blast. So this is our original scaleless head male. 
that everything was predicated off of. He's been a little bit of a mauser, so we'll give him some mice. Let's see, he's taking that no problem. Superfly head exantic male. Hi, buddy. You okay? <laughs> Here. Yeah, you're fine. You were just laying funny. I was like, oh my god, did you just expire on me? Uh, <laughs> he did not. So we basically have, sorry, this is a Superfly head exantic female. So the original person that had these, the plan was to breed those two together. Uh, we'll probably change that up and breed visuals to them so we don't have possible heads. Pastel Blitz head exantic. This is a really cool snake right here. Um, I dig it anyway. Throw that in there. He took a big old turd in the back and he just got cleaned up. Close that one. This is a snow. So this is an albino exantic. Now, the snows, uh, they're going to have some yellow on them. The albino's got too much that for to delete all of it. Because exantic doesn't really get rid of all of it. It just lowers it a lot. But they actually end up to me, an albino as a baby looks better than a snow. I said it. I said what I said. It is what it is. But as an adult, when these age, I think they have a really, really cool look to them. And I actually like them better than an albino. So it's one of those that actually, I think, gets better as it ages, not worse. Uh, when it's young, it kind of looks like a washed out albino. Scaleless head pinstripe female. And you can see just a little bit of missing skin on there. Now, people always talk about the scaleless head itself changing the pattern and I don't think that's anywhere more evident than it is on pen. To me it just deletes a lot of the, the striping down the side. You get a lot more of the spotting along the back. If you really want to see where a scaleless head by itself changes pattern pen stripe, this is a great place to look. So over here this is the Pastel Lesser Krypton Het Desert Ghost. Now this one skipped a few meals which is not uncommon so we'll probably go with a smaller meal here. Um, so yes, what else in here? This is a triple het female with two other genes. So it's pastel, it's lesser, it's het cryptic, it's het clown. Those two hets make a visual allelic combo. It's also 100% het desert ghost. So there's a whole lot going on in that snake right there. A whole lot going on. This 1916-04 is a uh, banana black pastel, also some paradoxy on the head and tail. You can see where this one looks different than the other one. This one's definitely, not, I don't think, a chimera at all. Probably more likely just a paradox. Um, and it's it's a really cool look, though. And I really like what Black Pastel does with Banana because it brings in more of that purple color. Oh, yeah, good morning. Wake up. Yeah, we'll see if he figures that out. And that one we're not messing with right now. Over here we have a... Uh, this is a... What is this one here? It's head ghost, possible head exantic. It was also part of a group he kept, and it's lesser. <laughs> I don't think I even wrote lesser on there, but it is definitely a lesser. So we'll throw that in there. You will find that, buddy. This is a male. He's just kind of been hanging out, too. I don't want to do with him. Pastel, Krypton, Het Desert Ghost. So this is one gene. Oh, man, you took a gnarly poop and a shed in there. You guys always do after you've been cleaned. This is one gene less than the other one. I said a lot going on. It's missing the lesser. Otherwise, you have the same triple het recessive with pastel in here. So again, het clown, het cryptic, het desert ghost, visual pastel. So four genes going on in this one. Two of those making an illegal combo. So, and then uh, this one here is a pastel champagne scaleless head male. And I believe he's probably going to be ready to breed this season. Especially we get another meal or two in it, which is awesome. It'll give me two different scaleless head breeders as we're going into our first year trying to produce scaleless heads. So uh, that'll be really cool. Really cool. Trying to produce full scaleless? Yes, full scaleless. We produced a shit ton of scaleless heads. We are now ready for full scaleless, so I'm excited about that. That brings down to, again, Toffino. This is her own production. She's in shed. This is about as shittiest as she ever is going to look. We're going to throw a uh, rodent in there in ASF. She'll get better looking when she's cleaned up from shed, but to me, you can see why I say this, this verse, that. I mean, there's no comparison. Uh, those just stay, they just stay nicer, you know? They just do. So if you don't aren't into the top, you know, you're doing it wrong. Uh, not really, but I'm just saying. This is something I just kept because I wanted. Okay, this is a killer blast. It's a super pastel pinstripe. There's really nothing else going on there. 
Uh, I'm not gonna lie, truth be told, I probably don't need this for a breeder. I just didn't have one. I kind of wanted one, so I made it and kept it. And I can use it as a breeder, it ain't gonna hurt me, but it's not like this thing's gonna push any project. I'm working on 100 light years ahead. Uh, now this is a pastel leopard blitz who just shed and pooped. So this on the other hand, quite opposite. This will push some projects ahead because it's got three genes in it. Um, yeah, man, next week we have to switch up to some bigger roads in here, guys. For these dudes, some of these girls are getting good size. Put them on some small rats if they're willing to take them. Uh, so with that, we're going to be able to use this to push our blitz stuff further ahead. We wanted to get more genes into our blitz. We'll let us see what a leopard would do with it. You can see the really big keyholing. It keeps a lot of pattern on there. It looks really cool. So I think that is going to mix well with a few things. Coming down here, again, this is why it's kind of kept because I wanted it. I just, all these years I never had a pewter, so I was like, I'm going to make a pewter and keep it. These are kind of like, I mean, I don't want to say, you know, basic when you talk about a pewter or a spinner blast. Uh, but they are kind of, you know, this is a simple two gene combo of two old genes, but I think they look really cool. And they're things I want to have around and I can still use them in my collection, so I made them to keep them. Even though, you know, it's not... Not everything has to be a triple recessive, is my point. Uh, I can make those and be very happy with them. This is a one that I really like. This is a snake that has definitely aged well. So when this snake was born, I was actually disappointed in it. Uh, but as it's aged, I've really began to appreciate the colors of it. And what we're looking at here is a GHI Orange Dream. I also really like GHI Fire. I would have kept one when I hatched them, uh, but they were all males. So, you know... The fire, I think, actually is a little bit brighter than this. The Orange Dream is a little bit more subdued, but it definitely changes the overall look of the GHI, and it makes that GHI color a little less metallic and a lot brighter, bringing some cool contrast in there. However, the metallic isn't erased, so you still have that kind of look. Uh, it makes for a really interesting snake, and it gets better with time. So I said I was disappointed with it when it was born, which was true. As we're here today, I am no longer at all disappointed with the look of that animal. This one is, I don't know, 19 something something. Oh yeah, this little snake. <laughs> so this is a male, this is a ghost. This is a spider um, ghost, lesser I think. Lesser spider ghost, I believe. Let me tell you, if anybody says that I don't care about my animals ever, let me tell you about this snake. It's born in 2019, this is 2022. It is way smaller than it should be. I had to help this snake shit for the first two solid years of its life. It just wasn't able to do that. Uh, so I had to do a lot of work on it and to, to keep it going, get it figured out. It's now doing fine. I don't know if I'll ever breed it. I might try, but I have to watch the babies. Um, thing is, it looked cool though. I just didn't feel right about parting with it because I had to work on it so much. So it just gets to kind of hang out here while I have room and uh, probably be a backup ghost breeder for me. Let me try once. But mostly it's just because it needed a home. Like, that thing wasn't doing so well. So we spent, I spent way too many hours on that snake. From a business standpoint, I should have thrown it in a freezer or given it away and been done with it. But from my heart standpoint, I can't do that, and I don't like people who do that. So we spent our time, we did everything we could for it, I worked with it a ton and ton and ton to really get it going way more than anybody should i'm just going to grab my opening tool here for these little ones but we got it done so that's its story next up is going to be another superfly head exanthic uh, spider it's also in shed so toss that in there if you would caleb's give it a little throw and so it's doing good but we'll see how that one goes um when it sheds out it's part of that same collection we got the same purpose so this one is one that I think we made. No, we didn't. We didn't make that. Fire bee. Oh, no. You got him? This is a fire bee head exantic as well. So we'll close that up. Uh, also came from that collection with the female. There's a whole lot of grow-ups in there, and that is empty. So that is this rack. It's always just one of my favorite racks. The reason is what this rack represents to me in a lot of ways, especially this wall. From here to here really represents the future of Olympus and where it's going. Um, Kurt would tell you, and he's probably not wrong, we may be a little overly heavy on Exanthic. You've heard me say we're trying to lessen the amount of spider, not because I don't believe in spider, it's because I got too damn much of it. So you look, no spider, no spider, no spider, no spider, spider, because I want it, spider. Okay, I can't help myself, I have an addiction problem. 
Uh, no spider in a lot of this, except for that queen bee. So it's three over here, eh, all exanthic related. Uh, and then over here, you don't see a lot of it either. Maybe one or two hiding in there. Uh, but you see a lot of exanthic. 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 Not. Exanthic. Exanthic. Actually, not. Uh, not. Not. Exanthic. Doesn't say, but it is. Not. But you see some scaleless head stuff, you know, too. Exanthic. Uh, exanthic. Exanthic. You know. So you can kind of see, I think that one was not. Uh, you know, so you start to see as you go through about, let's say, a third to half of what we kept back as Xanthic. So you can really see that push is still alive and well in our collection. You can see some new genes that you're going to start seeing more of the scaleless head. You're going to start seeing more fire with our Xanthic stuff. It's becoming very evident when you look through here. You're going to start seeing more Krypton. And as Kurt's going to be very happy, more Clown, because you all know the Clown's been a thorn in our side and continues to be to this day. You're going to start seeing more of that stuff as we raise this up. Also, the Hellfire section up here, uh, very excited about that. So it, it represents the future of where we're headed. As I put more holdbacks in here, some of these move out and get to the now, and it just continues to cycle on that way. Kurt, anything you want to add? No. Caleb, anything you want to add? Nope. All right, guys, that's all I got. We're going to go feed some cool shit now. Not that this isn't cool, but, you know, some fangy, fangy stuff for those members on Patreon. We'll catch you next time.